G'day again. Uh, just going to, we're just going to be going to be having a bit of a look at some more uh, Mac games that came out uh, last month, October 2023. So we had a, quite a few interesting indie titles come out uh, last month. So we'll start with the first one, uh, Slay the Princess by Black Tabby Games. It's received a lot of a lot of praise, uh, over 3,000 positive reviews. And it's very extensively uh, voice acted. It's very impressive. So let's have a bit of a let's squeeze at the trailer. But she's a princess. We're supposed to save her. You're supposed to slay her, or she'll go on to destroy everything. Do you not understand what everything means? You poor thing. We both know this isn't you. See? She's not a monster. She pries the blade from your infuriatingly rigid hands. I'll try to make it quick. What is she? She plunges it into your chest, tearing through flesh and sinew, but failing to hit anything vital. Oh no! I'll try again. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Collapse to the floor, blood pooling in the cavity she carved into your torso. She leans over you, tears leaving pink streaks down her cheeks. I wish it didn't have to end like this. And it's too late to think of how things could have gone differently. Everything goes dark, and you die. Alright, we'll move on. Right. So it's, uh, yes, it's uh, entirely hand-drawn. That's a very, very pretty little game. Uh, so it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, minimum system requirements are uh, Windows 7, or the developers say a recent Linux build, uh, with a 2.6 GHz uh, quad-core processor. 4 gigabytes of RAM, uh, an iGPU of some sort, and 14 gigabytes of free space. Uh, for Mac, it's pretty much the same. I would, I would honestly, I would say that uh, most most Macs, if they're able to run Steam, would pro would probably be able to run this without any major any without any major drama. It's a it's a two two D game, but it's a it's a very good looking one. So, we'll move on to the next one, which is uh, .age by Michelle uh, Michelle, Michelle uh, Pirova Pirovano. Uh, so, it's been in development for nine years. Uh, it's, uh, it looks like a very simple little uh, pixel, pixel uh, builder, but it's actually quite deep. So, we'll have a bit of a squeeze at the trail. My toaster. Ocha, Pesha, Pesha, Qua, Hueto, Meshwa, Pesha, Ocha, Pato, Pato, Wapa, Pesha, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll move on. <laughs> um, yeah, so as you can see, it starts off as a bit of a simple little builder, but it, well, things can quickly turn a bit bad, to put it mildly. So it's available again for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, minimum system requirements are Windows 7, a 64 bit processor. Uh, four gigabytes of RAM or above, and the GPU isn't advised, but I would say any basic uh, in uh, integrated graphics would be able to run it, and 300 megabytes of free space. Uh, for Mac, it's quite uh, pretty pretty similar requirements. It's basically a case of if you're able to watch this video, you will be able to run run dot age, so it's not very demanding at all. Alright, on to the next one. Uh, Cat Tales, uh, Wildwood Story by Falcon Development. Now, this is a bit of a. Uh, now, I'm trying to work out the best part of the script, but to be honest, it's a. Uh, I'll go by what I've written. Uh, it's a cat themed uh, life sim uh, role playing game. You can hunt prey, romance other cats, uh, raise crops, and battle the quite unusual uh, voidling cats. 
it's a, it's a follow up to uh, Cat Tales, released in 2017. So let's have a bit of a squeeze at the trailer. Yeah, so there you go, it's a bit of a different little game. So, so it's available for Windows and Mac. Uh, minimum system requirements are Windows 10 or later, uh, 2 gigahertz processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, uh, graphics uh, Intel uh, UHD Graphics 620, which is, oh, will be about 2000, so 2017-2018, um, uh, integrated graphics card, so it's not not very not very demanding. I would say any laptop any laptop made in the last what, last five years, and five hundred megabytes of free space. Uh, system uh, for Mac side, uh, Mac OS twelve uh, Monterey, uh, two gigahertz processor, four gigabytes of RAM, the same um, Intel USG graphics six twenty, and five hundred megabytes of free space. So. Again, it's not not very demanding. So, uh, next one is uh, World of Horror by who? No, uh, Pet Pet Panstas. Pet. Yes. All right. <laughs> I'll show you. I got that right. <laughs> so it's uh, basic. It's a one bit uh, survival horror game. It's uh, quite quite the interesting. Uh, looking title it, and you can see from the screenshots there of course some very unusual creatures to put it mildly and it's been described by the works of Junji Ito and HP uh, Lo Lo Lovecraft uh, Lo Lovecraft Lovecraft yeah I've, I've read their works there uh, yeah <laughs> interesting works <laughs> so let's move on let's have a bit of at the trail Um... Really got to start watching the 
the trailers. So I'm that, I might get in trouble with YouTube over that. <laughs> um, okay, I'm not really the best with the horror kind of thing, but so available platforms are Windows, Mac, uh, PS4, PS5, and Switch. Uh, minimum system requirements are Windows 7 and a Intel Core i3 processor, uh, one gigabyte of RAM, Intel HD Graphics 440, and 500 megabytes of free space. So, a very. I'm actually having trouble thinking of what systems wouldn't be able to run it. It's. I'd say basically if it's able to run Windows 7, it should be able to run this game. <laughs> there. Yeah, not very high requirements at all. For the Mac side, they're a bit, a little bit higher. Uh, Mac OS 10.15 Catalina, uh, 1.4 GHz processor, 8 GB of RAM, Intel HD Graphics 5000, and 500 megabytes of free space. It's basically a case of if it can run Catalina, it it'll be able to run this. So, our next little title is uh, Executive Assault 2. By, by Hesketh Studios Limited. It's uh, quite an interesting little uh, uh, space uh, uh, space ga space a little well builder builder I would say uh, a bit of a mix of uh, real time strategy and first person shooter. It's got uh, base building, space combat, research, and multiplayer. So let's have a bit of squeeze that trial. Let's go to the system requirements. So, very pretty little game. Uh, so, it's available for Windows and Mac. Uh, it's a sequel. It's a sequel to uh, Executive Assault, which was released in 2015. And as you can see, it's got uh, quite a range of different uh, vehicles you can pilot there, including uh, mechs, uh, tanks, and starships. And it also has a tech tree and map editor. System requirements are. This one's probably one of the more demanding titles for this month. Uh, Windows 10 64 bit, uh, Intel i5 or an AMD dual core processor, uh, 6 gigabytes of RAM, uh, they say a mid range uh, a GPU, it's at least 4 gig gigabytes of free uh, RAM. So I would say oh, something like a AMD Radeon uh, 46. 460, 480, and 8 gigabytes of free space. So, so yes, it's a, a bit more of a demanding game. Uh, a lot of systems shouldn't have trouble running at minimum 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 specs, but yeah, just keep a bit of an eye out. Uh, for the Mac side, uh, Mac OS 10.15 Catalina, the Intel i7 processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, they say a really good AMD Radeon uh, GPU. So I would say, again, something like a 460 or 480, probably one of the probably uh, one of the M, M, M series Mac should be able to run it as well. Uh, the space is a bit odd here. It says two gigabytes on the on the page, but I would go 
same windows in Extreme 8, just just to be sure. So, uh, next one, uh, Long Gone Days by This I Dreamt. Uh, it's a bit of a strategic uh, JRPG. Uh, uh, it's got quite a few characters um, and a hand, hand, handcrafted battles uh, set against a bit of a, a world full of uh, politics and war. It, it's received uh, quite solid reviews. Sorry, let's have a bit of a squeeze at the trailer. So I'll move on to the system requirements. Now I don't want to. I don't want to spoil the whole thing. So, uh, right. It's uh, like I said, it's received uh, quite solid reviews. Uh, eight, eights and nines out of tens. Uh, there is uh, the story does feature uh, polit politics, so that might that might turn off some people. All right. So, it's available on Windows and Mac, uh, Nintendo Switch, PS4 and PS5, Xbox One and Xbox X and, X and, and S. Minimum system requirements are honestly fairly fairly low. Windows 7, 2 gigahertz uh, dual core processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 1 gigabyte, 1 gigabyte, gigabytes of uh, VRAM for GPU and two gigabytes of free space. And much the same for the Mac side, except instead of Windows 7, it's Mac OS 10.12 Sierra. So basically, if it's able to run Windows 7 or Sierra, it's able to run, it'll be able to run a long time days. So, next one. Uh, My Little Universe by Estotti. Estotti? Yes, anyway. So, it's a, uh, this is actually a re rebuilt uh, version of a mobile game released in 2021. It's a bit of a sandbox uh, dungeon crawler. Uh, it's got quite, uh, quite a range of enemies, uh, including over a hundred over 150 enemies and uh, a bit of base building, a bit of a bit of everything. Really, it's received a quite solid reviews. Had over. Over, it's had about to over a hundred, over fifty thousand players on both iOS and Android. And yes, so let's let's have a squeeze at the trailer. After a cataclysmic event, you've been imbued with the celestial powers of creation, giving you the ability to rebuild worlds that were unmade by a mysterious cosmic threat. As you embark on your adventure, know that you're not truly alone. Bring together a group of friends and team up to become an unstoppable force. Collect resources that can be used to travel between worlds. As well as create shiny new tools and the toughest armor. It's dangerous to go alone. Take your friends. Fight as a team against a multitude of challengers and monstrosities. Destroyed by a dark entity, you'll need to restore the portals to be able to travel across the universe.
explore the nine worlds, rebuild them into the paradises that they once were. Gather allies and embark on a quest in your own little universe. Yeah, so that was the trailer there. So it's available on uh, on quite a few platforms actually. Uh, Windows, Mac, uh, Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS5, uh, Xbox One, and Xbox uh, Series X and S. Uh, the system requirements are the once again not not very high. Windows 7, uh, Samus Pack One, uh, Intel Core i5 processor, four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, Intel HD Graphics 630 and 2GB of free space. Uh, so it's a f fairly, lo low in fairly low in game. Uh, for the Mac side, uh, Mac OS 10.12 uh, Sierra, Intel Core i5 processor again, 4GB of RAM, uh, NVIDIA GeForce GT 755M. So Nowadays it would be a very low end uh, graphics card. It would be, I would honestly say about a 2016-ish uh, Mac with an iGPU roughly, and one gigabyte of free space. So again, fa fairly, fairly more system clients. Uh, next up, so interesting little one, uh, Hexarchy by uh, Main Tank Software. It's, uh, it's uh, published by uh, Yogscast Games. Uh, so it's a bit of a forex uh, uh, strategy uh, deck builder. Uh, it tries to comp compress a full um, forex game into into a, uh, roughly an hour. It's quite quite interesting. So let's have a look, bit of a look at the trailer. Yes, so I have a bit of a squeeze at the system specs. So, uh, it's available for Windows and Mac. Uh, minimum system requirements are Windows 10 uh, with an Intel uh, i5 or AMD Ryzen 3 Pro 2200G, uh, 4GB of RAM, uh, integrated graphics. They don't actually specify which one there. But there's a bit more detail on the Mac side, and two gigabytes lots of free space. Uh, for the Mac side, uh, Mac OS 10.14, uh, uh, Mojave, Mojave, I believe I'm saying that right. The Intel Core i5 at running at 2.7 gigahertz, which it's not not all that demanding. Uh, six gigabytes of RAM, uh, a one gigabyte GPU, uh, either a NVIDIA GeForce 775M, a AMD Radeon HD 6970, or Intel Iris Pro. So, if it's uh, if the, if your Mac's got a dedicated graphics card, anything made after uh, probably 2015, if it's got an uh, integrated graphics, probably anything made after 2018. So, and uh, two gigabytes of free space. Now that is 
all four. That's all the main ones we'll cover, but I'll touch on a few honourable mentions as well. As well. So we have uh, Rail Grade by uh, Minakata Donax. Uh, it came out on um, uh, the Epic Game Store uh, about uh, a year or so ago. It didn't really get much attention. It's more the Epic Epic's fault there. So it's a bit of a train management uh, title with uh, various engines, uh, freight, and a 50 mission uh, single player mode. Uh, we've got uh, Vivaldia uh, 2 by Porcelain Fortress. It's a bit of an interesting one. It's a 2D uh, platformer made by the team behind the Vivaldia Vivaldi browser. It, uh, so 3D, so it might be worth having a bit of a squeeze. It came out right at the end of, of, of October. And we've got uh, Phantom Rose 2 Sapphire by Makara. It's a roguelike deck builder. It's got two different classes, uh, has over 200 different cards, and you defeat uh, various creatures attacking uh, areas school. Yeah, you know, the main character. So, uh, it's an interesting little one. Now, uh, before I finish up, I'd just like to touch on... Sorry. So, um, I know that the video quality is not exactly... Uh, no, not even not exactly a hundred dollars to be honest, but uh, so Total War and uh, Total War Fear and Star Trek Infinite uh, they came out in October, and uh, well they did come out in, uh, in October. The <clears throat> they've gotten a pretty bad reception. They're only hovering about fifty five, fifty six percent, going by a few thousand by you know thousands of, of of reviews you know I I think the companies behind them you know they've got some issues they need to sort sort out before they release any more titles so they have to have they have got to have a bit of a look at themselves and go you know what what went wrong you know with you know with, with these I I mm, I try to be picky with with what I choose, so I go by um, same same DB, uh, you know, same database. Uh, I aim for titles that have at least two hundred and fifty positive reviews, not title reviews, positive, and a average and the average score of eighty percent positive or higher. Now the ones I include for honourable mentions, mentions are ones that yeah you know, they don't quite get the the 250 or they don't quite get the 80 percent or higher so so i mean on the games i've talked about talked about above i'm you know i'd be quite happy for you to you know have have a bit of swiss see what you think you know there's probably something there there you'll enjoy or at least be curious about but for total war you know pharaoh and star trek infinite it's just I I can't recommend them. I yeah you know, I think I think Crazy of Assembly and Paradox seem to have a bit of a, a you know uh, like like I say here a a reevaluation. Yeah you know, yeah you know, maybe they need to build a new new engine or maybe more time needs to be spent. Maybe they have to listen to listen to feedback, but. Yeah, so they came out in they came out in October for the Mac, but I I'm just not, not able to recommend them. So okay, so thank you for thank you for watching this video, and we'll, I'm currently I'm currently doing a bit of streaming as well on Saturdays. The next one is uh, I believe it was my small sale. I'd have to check my schedule, but yes, sorry. Well, if I th these pre-recorded videos, uh, I'll be doing one, another one in December, having a bit of a look at, at the games that came out in November, and yes, so I'll see you next time, and thank you for watching.